So I have a small channel update before I begin. In the next week or two, I'm moving to a brand new studio. So you might see some downtime between videos, but I do need a new PC for a potential future editor. I really wanted to do an all white build, but I couldn't get all the parts in white. We're going through a crazy shortage right now in the PC industry, so I had to improvise. We're gonna be doing a black and white build, but I am gonna be doing an all white desk setup in the future. So I think this sort of PC build is gonna go perfect with it. The second thing is, if you like this style of video, if you wanna see more PC builds, because I've done them before, let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, subscribe, so that tells the algorithm that you want me to make more PC builds in the future. Now this video is being sponsored by Western Digital. They were kind enough to send out their WD SN550 NVMe SSD. This is four times faster than a regular SSD. It even has this cool piece of software called the Western Digital Dashboard that gives you an overview of the drive itself. Under the status section, for example, you can see the actual capacity of the drive, how much space has been used up. You can monitor the temperature. This is very important. Some other M2 NVMe SSDs get really hot, and when it gets too hot, the write speeds start to slow down so the drive can cool off, so that's good to see. You also have have a life remaining section giving an idea how healthy your drive is. Now, because this drive is new, it's at 100%, but if it starts to get too low, this will give you an idea about a good time to upgrade your drive. Then under the performance section, you have this feature called trim, which allows the operating system to free up space that, of files that have been deleted. Because sometimes when you delete something, it's not truly deleted. And then trim will basically make sure that space is gone, uh, allowing your drive to perform better and make sure it has all the space it currently can give you. Then under the tool section, you have their smart diagnostic test, which basically does a scan of the drive to make sure everything's okay. This is just a nice, neat way to basically monitor the drive every once in a while to make sure it's nice and healthy. Like, look, this is a solid option. It's not super expensive. For one terabyte, you spend about a hundred bucks and you get 2,400 megabytes a second down. This is fast enough that when you boot up Windows, it's gonna be extremely fast. Your programs are gonna load up faster. And most importantly, when I edit videos on this, it's gonna allow me to scrub through my footage much quicker. The PC case is going to be the Corsair 5000D. I just fell in love with this case when it first came out. It has this mesh look to it to allow for better airflow. It's gotten great reviews by some of your favorite PC reviewers. And it has this like white and gray theming, which looks very classy. And I also love the little touches of having these yellow USB ports, which is something unique. The cool thing is all the openings are magnetic. Like they have these magnetic filters to make cleaning dust a lot easier. And the back panel is very well made to allow for easier cable management. I am gonna be mounting the GPU vertically. So I bought a PCI 4.0 GPU riser from LinkUp so we can connect the GPU properly. Fans, we're sticking with white too. These are Corsair's LL120 RGB fans. I'm not gonna go unicorn crazy. It's not gonna look like a puke fest, but I do want RGB fans so I can have a static color throughout. The next thing is the PSU. And I went with a white PSU because I don't want like a black and white bottom. I just want the middle to be kind of black. And I was able to grab the Cooler Master V850 Gold V2. I wanted a thousand watts just because of all the power I'm putting in here, but I can't find a thousand watt PSU. It's all been like bought out by miners. So 850, it's gold, it's the white edition, it's 80 plus. It will do the job to handle the power requirements of this PC. RAM, we're going with the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. Now, these are 4,000 megahertz. XMP ready for the type of build I'm doing. There's a little bit of RGB on the top, so it's gonna look very nice with the rest of the system. GPU, RTX 3080. This is NVIDIA's reference card. I would have loved a white ASUS GPU, but again, I just couldn't get one. Having a 3080, doesn't matter who it's from right now, is like owning gold. As for the motherboard, I'm going with the ASUS ROG Maximus Hero. This is a Z590 motherboard. It's simple, it's clean with the black and silver aesthetic. It's gonna match nicely. Multiple slots for M2 NVMe SSDs. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back, which I believe the original one or the previous one only had one Thunderbolt 3 port, so that's kinda nice. And it's also Wi-Fi 6E 
capable. Now, I will be using a 11th gen Intel 11900K. Yes, I would have loved to use a 5900X or 5950X, but to be honest, it's sold out everywhere. And if I wanna purchase it, I have to pay insane scalper prices, which I refuse to do. And to cool this crazy hot CPU is the IQ H100i Elite Compilix. This is a all-in-one water cooler. It's using coarse airs, magnetic fans or maglev technology, which is supposed to help with noise and cooling. And it's RGB, baby. We wanna keep all the RGB in one software, which is IQ, so that configuring all the lights in this computer is going to be a lot easier. So how does the 11900K perform? Well, if you're into single core clock speeds, you're still a hardcore 1080p gamer, maybe you're some sort of esports professional, then you're gonna want the CPU. It has some of the fastest single core clock speeds that I've ever tested on a computer. No matter what game I played, except for one, which I'll tell you in a second, the frames per second were significantly higher with the 11900K compared to the 3900X and the 10900K. For some reason, the only game that I got slightly lower frames per second was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I don't know why, but it was still technically faster on the 10900K. Now, if you wanna talk multi-core speeds, yes, the 11900K is technically faster than the 10900K, but not by much. The 3900X from last year still produces better multi-core speeds. Now, if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro like I do, the 11900K beats out the 10900K, but it doesn't do it by much. The 3900X, because of those four extra cores, still performs better in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're talking about Photoshop, that's where the 11900K comes out on top. Photoshop doesn't utilize all the cores on your computer, so it prefers higher single core clock speeds. Now, if you're a developer, the story is still gonna hold true. I did a Mozilla Firefox compile test. The 3900X came out on top, finishing it in 15 minutes, the 10900K in 16 minutes, and in last, the Rocket Lake processor at 17 minutes. So here's the thing. If you need a CPU today, Intel might well be your only option. They're the only CPU company that actually has stock available without having to spend more on crazy scalper prices or wait months until some of those 5000 series CPUs come back in stock. For those of you that want a 5000 series processors, you know who you are, you know what you're doing already. You know those faster 12 and 16 core parts will really benefit your workloads and I get it, then wait. Because by then, by the time you get those parts, Intel will have Alder Lake out and hopefully we'll have some better competition again. Now, if you're interested in checking out the WD SN550, which I feel offers great value for the price, I'll place a link to it in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because if you did, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.